Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. Be sure and watch my 300 other shop videos. There are many, many of them. Today I have a little project here, and uh, this is a hand wheel off the tailstock of a Logan lathe. And now I need a, a hand wheel for another project, so I'm going to attempt to make a copy of this. And I'm going to use the original cast iron hand wheeler that's a casting, not a pattern but I'm going to use it as a pattern and attempt to, to cast one of these, but of course it'll be out of aluminum. Now there are several modifications I'll have to make in order to uh, use this as a pattern. And uh, this is going to be another one of my uh, casting jobs or molding jobs for uh, using a uh, pattern or a casting that has an irregular parting line, which causes the job to be much, much more difficult. Back when I was in my prime teaching machine shop in high school, uh, I had a problem with these hand wheels. Uh, this is a plastic hand wheel and it's off of the bridge port and it's for the, the down feed of the quill. And uh, shame on you, bridge port, shame on you. You should be in the hall of shame. But they made these out of plastic. Now, can you imagine this in a high school shop made out of plastic. They were very generous in making a steel knob, but the, knob, uh, the handle isn't going to break. So remember, uh, if you got a bridge port, these aren't even held on uh, by any method, so they slide off and end up on the floor, and uh, after buying several of them at, uh, at considerable cost as a replacement, uh, I actually uh, cast one by this method, but that's a long time ago. And what I did to start with on that is I, would, uh, I glued the two pieces together I think it was in three pieces, just uh, uh, so that I could use it as a pattern, and uh, that's about all that glue is worth, too, is holding something together while we make a pattern. It really has no strength. I have very little uh, faith in most of the epoxies and other different kinds of glues that you might hold something like this together. Now, don't send me any suggestions, because I don't believe them. I'm sorry. been around too long. But... Uh, I, I did make these out of aluminum, and then they lasted. They, they, they never did fail. Why they didn't do that? Well, we know why they didn't do it at the factory, because it would have cost an extra nickel. So they made them out of plastic. They would have got them from a supplier, of course. But, but it's a shame that on a lovely machine like a bridge board, where everything was so very well built, that they would uh, really chintz on something like this. I got a little bit off a topic there, but I did have to vent a little bit, because I do get angry when uh, something isn't built properly and, and and if you've been in a shop of any kind you have run into this kind of aggravation. Now here are the few preparations that I have to make uh, prior to using this as a pattern. I will remove the handle and that's held in there by a press fit. Now you might find some of these that are threaded in. I'll just tap that out and there it is. Set it aside for later so I don't lose it. Now I have to fill these holes. You could fill the holes with uh, clay. This is Roma Plastilina for you sculptors out there, but any ch children's clay would work fine. You could just fill it up. But what I like to do on this particular uh, job, and I made this off of camera here. This is a piece of Delrin, but it could be any material at all. Uh, notice that I put this in the lathe and I center drilled both ends, although probably one end would be good enough. And I just made that so it's kind of a press fit. And the reason I did that is uh, later on when I go to drill this, if I just drill it on the drill press rather than on a lathe, or if there's no good way to hold it on a lathe, this will give me the center. And I got two tries at it. I think some of you understand what I'm getting at when I when I say that. Now I have to take a little of that Roma Plastilina and fill the keyway on both sides, just a dab and smear it off. And again here we can either uh, fill that with clay or use a piece of uh, material like I did here with center holes and I think I'll do the latter. Alright, I have a brass plug in here. Center drill. I, I center, again I center drilled both sides because there's no extra charge, just in case. And I filled the keyway with clay. I got a little irregularity there too, which I think I will fill. 
not that that's any biggie, but all you got to do is take clay and and work it like that to fill it. Now one other problem that I have. This has been machined. This surface here has been machined and I think probably so uh, possibly was held like this in the factory turned down here and then there was something to hold on to here while they drilled it. I'm just deducing that but since this is cylindrical and not tapered and remember everything on a pattern has to be tapered and we call that pattern draft. So in order to do that or do something about that I could have put this back in the lathe and probably held it by this and, and uh, put a three degree taper on there but what I did and sometimes I go to way more effort and trouble than I should but I made a little sleeve here and this has a taper on it can you can you see that that is tapered a little bit and it's been machined so it will fit over here just a slip fit it's not going to go any place and that has produced the taper that I need in order to withdraw this from the sand. So now I have my pattern ready to go but again this is a split pattern irregular parting line or originally it would have been a split pattern and they probably made four or six or more of these on a match plate at one time so they could mass produce them. I'll be doing one of. Today is uh, the end of March, I think it's about the 30th, and it's going to be a nice day, and we have a vicious winter here in Illinois. Possibly it's coming to an end so I can get down into the garage in my fair weather foundry. So the sand is going to be very cold, especially when I get deep down into it, and I might have to wear gloves. But uh, I, I do have the urge to get outside and make a casting today and that's exactly what I'm going to do here presently. Thank you for the hundreds of wonderful comments that you leave. Again, I cannot answer them all. There's too many. But I, I do appreciate the good ones and uh, some are really heartwarming, I must say. Now, people have trouble finding my videos. I know I've shown this before, so skip over this if you don't like it. but. Uh, most of my uh, videos are divided up into uh, playlists, playlists. So if you get on the playlist that is for foundry videos or pattern making, as opposed to the tips and the mystery tools and all of that, uh, you're going to find some of this basic information on mold making, foundry, and casting because I'm not going to show everything for this. I'm assuming that you have seen these and uh, some of you might right away say, well, what is your sand made of? What is this made of? Well, I'm not telling you today. It's all in the other videos because I'm trying to expedite things and avoid repeating myself for the most of you that have seen all these videos. And thanks for bearing with me. Let's get outside. I'm in my Fairweather foundry out in the garage, and today is the warmest day in possibly five or six months. It's uh, 60 degrees out. All of a sudden winter has turned to spring in uh, northern Illinois and uh, I am so glad to be out here with just a long sleeve shirt. This is my molding bench. This hasn't been shown in all of that many videos. It's a McEngelvin uh, molding bench that came from a, yet another school who uh, trashed its uh, industrial art shop. And if you haven't seen these videos before, uh, that's my sand muller. So I've already prepared the sand and the bin here is full of foundry sand and I'm using an oil based sand. Here's my riddle which is nothing more than a screen or a sieve and I'm going to work on my molding board here and there's that hand wheel and the flask, the two halves of the flask and I guess that's enough basic information. There's the furnace which I will roll out into the driveway here and half hour or so. So let's get to molding. Now uh, remember we start with a pattern, we make a mold, and our finished product is a casting. Those words are not interchangeable. 
The first thing I do is sprinkle a little parting sand. That keeps the molding sand from sticking to the pattern. And I like to sift the sand a little bit, just the sand that's going to be around the pattern. That's all I need as far as sifted sand. Read it off. Now it's ready to flip over. Now, as you can see, can't even see the pattern. Now I held the board on there so that a heavy cast iron wouldn't fall out as I flipped it over. But now I need to take my molding spoon and part this off. That, at least that's the word I use. I'm parting it off to the parting line, which again is irregular. So uh, watch carefully as I do this. I won't show the whole thing because this, this is rather time consuming. I've got to do a lot of thinking as I do it. I suppose my hand will be in the way. That sand is pretty loose because it didn't get packed down. All the way around the rim here. I have to carefully cut this down to the parting line which is halfway down on that rounded rim of the uh, uh, pattern. I'm going to call it a pattern now even though it's a casting. Now I need to feather everything off so that I am creating draft taper so that I will be able to pull the other half of the mold off without anything tearing. And I wouldn't be surprised if I wouldn't have to do this twice, you know, that I will have some failures. Can you see now how I'm parting it down halfway and tapering it back? I got a little more to go. And then I like to also pack it a little bit because there are areas there where the sand isn't very hard. And you can see why, because that was the underside when I'm packing from the other way. Now, uh, it's kind of hard to judge where the pack parting line is here on that rounded uh, rim because there's, uh, that's been machined or polished so, uh, so it's smooth, so I'm kind of guessing. So uh, probably when I'm done with this, there's going to be some sand that tears out and there'll be uh, a rather irregular uh, uh, area around there that will get filed and polished and whatnot when I'm done with the casting. So sometimes the casting can be pretty rough compared to the finished uh, product. I worked for about 10 minutes parting it down and I actually used a little, uh, I just used a ruler so I got a, a round end and a, a, a square end on it and then I, I also packed this down with my finger the best that I could. Now it is about ready. I like to get all the loose sand out of there. And again, we need parting sand. 
or the fresh sand would stick to the spots that I have uh, parted down. And uh, now, I'm ready to ram this side down. And I offset the, the pattern because I'm going to cut a sprue in the wider spot here. That's the reason for that. All right, I've rammed this side and I've cut a sprue. And I like to tap it a little bit. And it's ready to take apart. Ta-da! Now, I did see a little bit of sand that fell in right here. And the reason for that, that also looks like it was machined a little bit around there and uh, there was no pattern draft. I have to cut my gate. I didn't cut my gate quite deep enough, but there it is. Not my gate, I meant sprue. So I know I need a gate going over. The gate is now cut, and I did it in both the top and the the bottom half and uh, there's no good provision now I wish I would have put a threaded hole in here to withdraw the pattern and in order to do that I'm going to try to grip that straight surface with a big old slip joint pliers and pull it straight out of there and hope not too much sand falls loose alright I pulled the pattern out of there now I did have sand stick right there so that will appear on the final casting as just a, a filled in area of, of aluminum. Some loose sand there, not very much. And I'll blow it out and close the mold and it is ready to pour. You can see there's a little loose sand there. Now another thing I do off camera is I will pick this up and turn the whole thing upside down and let gravity help me drop all the loose stuff out of there. And if you see a little sand broke loose there, but that isn't going to hurt because that will file off real easy because it's on the periphery of the casting. So I'll turn it upside down and blow on it when I have it upside down. Same thing with this, it's already upside down, but I'll, I'll blow on it a little bit again with lung power, put it back together and it's ready to pour. 